Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Chemistry and of course in this episode we're going to be looking at the shape the shape of orbitals alright the shape of orbitals please do not forget to like this video liking this video will make other students easily find this video Abi you know what made a pass please click on that like button now before you continue all right click on it now all right also do not forget to subscribe to this channel subscription will send notification we'll go notify you for your phone you go receive notification see we don't release new video okay so why why would you not want to subscribe so click on that red subscribe button just below this video and do not forget to share this video eh please allow everybody to pass share to your friends to your loved ones okay let them also come and learn and this tutorial is sponsored by the o3 schools jam cbt practice app okay for a jam bag exam for a jam cbt exam all right you need a good jam cbt practice app and that is where the o3 school jam app comes in okay it is stuffed with all you need to succeed in your exam okay please let us see a question from the app we'll talk about the app later this is a 2021 question number 15 concerning the shape of orbitals how many orbitals are in the d sub shell okay how many orbitals are in the d sub shell a one b three c5 d7 okay so i'm going to come back to this question and many more questions all right at the end of the class not before so please go and download this application so that you can perform optimally well in your exam all right it has all the past questions so you don't need to bother about past questions at all all right now of course there's a classroom that has lecture notes structured according to the jam syllabus many people don't tell you that you need jam syllabus to succeed in your exam hey if you read you study without your jam syllabus you may either what overread Eh? or you may what misread so reading will become too bulky for you but once you read according to the syllabus you know exactly what jam wants you to read under a particular topic so all the lecture notes on the app have been structured according to the jam syllabus likewise do not forget to uh, uh, know that also what they say UTME mock challenge on the application every Saturday, or every Saturday rather you compete with your mates win amazing prizes get used to jump pass and likely exam question what's more is that what you see your results release every Saturday so it makes you get what uh, uh, track your progress and get confidence towards the main exam so please do not sleep on the app go and download it immediately now the shape of what orbitals okay I'll begin by saying that there are principally four types of orbitals that make up the K L, M, N, O, P, and Q shells. Okay? If you followed us when we did electronic configuration, this will not be new to you, all right? All these shells will not be new to you at all. So if you have not watched electronic configuration, go back. From the first episode, I've been talking about electronic configuration. So if you, if you do not know anything about electronic configuration, go and watch it, all right? So this one, uh, I said by, by the azimuth or quantum number. Okay, so the K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, uh, P, and Q shells, all right? There are four types of orbitals, okay, that make up all these shells. And uh, of course, the S the p the d and the f okay and what's this spdf orbitals means this s stands for what sharp take note okay it stands for sharp this stands for what principal okay this stands for diffuse okay and this stands for fundamental okay all right so these are the four types of orbital that make up the K, L, M, N, O, P, and Q shares respectively. You must take note of this. The S is sharp. P, principal. D, diffuse. F, fundamental. If you want form song, if you form song with an S, P, D, F, sharp, principal, diffuse, fundamental. Eh, eh. So anyway, you will use to understand and remember them. Go and remember them, all right? So, sharp, principal, diffuse, and fundamental. So, let us continue. Let us begin with what we did. First, what? Orbital, which is what? S orbital, which is what? Sharp. Let us look at the shape of the S orbital. The shape of the S orbital is spherical, okay? This S orbital is spherical, spherical in shape. In shape, all right, it's like this. It's very coward in shape, okay. So, I'm showing you a, a picture showing what uh the shape of what of an S orbital, okay. That's how exactly how it looks, okay. And of course, the among all the orbitals, among all the four orbitals, SPDF, SPDF, S orbital has the least number of electrons, 
Okay, the s orbital can only accommodate two electrons. Okay, it can only what accommodate what only two electrons. You must take note of that. Among all the four orbitals, s orbital has what the least number of what electrons that it can what accommodate, and that is what two electrons. Okay, I'll recap again. I said that what that the s orbital is spherical in shape. Okay, and what accommodate the least number of electrons among what the what the four orbitals and can only accommodate two electrons now that is all about the s orbital there's nothing more to know all right now let's talk about the p orbital now the p orbital on the other hand is dumbbell in shape okay it's dumbbell dumbbell in shape in shape Okay, something like this, all right? It's dumbbell in shape, like an hourglass. Like if you fold your hand, okay? If you fold your arms, all right? Folding of the arms is like this, you see it? Dumbbell what in shape, okay? That is what the shape of what? Of the P what orbital. There are three types of what? P orbitals, okay? Or we can call them what? Degenerate orbitals, or we can call them suborbitals, all right? And of course, they are what? The PX, the PY, and the P what Z, respectively, okay? These are the three types. Of what of p orbital px the py and the pz each of these suborbitals okay can accommodate two electrons each the p orbital can accommodate two electrons the y orbital can accommodate two electrons and the pz orbitals can accommodate what two electrons making it a total of what how many electrons a total of what? six electrons okay that's what can be accommodated by the world by the p orbital all right so the p orbital can only what accommodate was six electrons take note of that all right so the p orbital i will recap again i say is dumbbell in shape okay this is the shape okay and i said was well, there are three types the px the py and the pz all right that's why you see when we are drawing our electron ball diagram okay for the p orbital we divide it into what three all right then we to start with putting in our electrons okay 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 and it can only accommodate six electrons six electrons that is the p orbital for you now let's go to the next orbital which is what take note of the shape so please this one is dumbbell in shape dumbbell in shape now let us go to the d orbital the d orbital on the other hand is double dumbbell in shape double dumbbell okay the d orbital d orbital on the other hand is what is double dumbbell in shape Double dumbbell in shape. All right, it is double dumbbell in shape. Okay, I'm currently showing you okay the uh the shape, okay, the picture showing what the shape of what of the d orbital. Okay, it is double dumbbell in shape. Okay, and likewise, apart from that, you should know that what that the d orbital has what five sub orbitals. It have what it has what five sub orbitals, okay? Or we call them degenerate orbital, degenerate orbitals, okay? As what five sub orbitals, or call them what the degenerate of orbitals, and they include, of course, the d x y, the d x z, the d y z, the square, the x square, uh, y square. Then the z word square. Okay, these are the what the degenerate what orbitals. Okay, of what of the d what of the d what orbital. Okay, the degenerate. These are the five suborbitals. This one, the x y, the x z, the y z, the square, the x square y square, and what the z word square. Okay, so these are what the uh the the five suborbitals of the d orbital. Okay, so please take note of that. Each of them can accommodate two electrons each. Two electrons each. Two electrons each, making it a total of what? ten electrons total for the what? For the d orbital. Okay, so the d orbital can only accommodate what? Ten electrons. Can only accommodate ten electrons. So please take note of that. Take note of that. And that is all for the d orbital. That by the way. Now let us go to the what? To the f orbital. The f orbital is it has a complex shape. It has a complex shape. Okay, that is the f orbital. F orbital. Of f orbital what has it has a complex shape, a complex what shape. Okay, so I say this one has a double dumbbell, right? Uh, the the this this one this dz square. Okay, it has what a little different shape. Okay, you see double, you see dumbbell, all right, but it's 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 shaped like a donut. 
Take note, this DZ square, it is shaped like it. I'm showing you a diagram. I'm taking you to be seeing it, seeing it already. All right, so now the comp this uh, F orbit are having what a complex shape. It has a complex shape. And of course, it has what seven suborbitals, seven suborbitals or degenerates. Seven suborbitals or degenerate, as you may call it. And of course, each of those suborbitals can accommodate two electrons each. And that makes it what a total of what 14 electrons. That's what can be accommodated by the f orbital. All right. So please take note of that and no peace. Okay. So now we have seen the shape of S, which is what spherical. So you must know their shape. Okay. Uh, uh, S P dumb, dumbbell D double dumbbell F complex. Okay. So those are the shapes. You know the number of electrons they can accommodate. All right. You know what they are suborbitals. All right. So that is very necessary. We are going to see some questions now. Where do we, where you will ask that kind of question? So please, you don't need to fade anything when it comes to what organic chemistry. One mark is very important. You may just set it for me off. It's a very simple question. Now, if you don't know it, you don't know it. All right. So please keep liking this video and of course drop comment. Drop comment. Encourage your commander. Okay. Some of you are selfish with comment. Are selfish with like. Okay. You will not repost. You will not share. You will not share. You will not share. You say my people, my my village. You know they hear give this. No, my village. You know they hear give. You know they want me people pass. You better run for that village. So please keep on liking. Now let us continue. We are not done. Oh, okay. We are not done with this sort episode. All right. So now what next? I want to see what. Uh, I told you that the p orbital is what is dumbbell in shape. The p orbital is dumbbell in shape. Okay, let me show you how the p orbital is. It's dumbbell in shape. This side is the head. Okay, this side. This one is called what? This side. This is a p orbital. Okay, this is the head. This is the what? This is the side. Okay, so now the s orbital. This one is p orbital. The s orbital does not have head. Or does it's spherical now, Abi? So it does not have head, it does not have a side. Okay, now when an s orbital, when an s orbital overlaps with any other orbital, let's say for example the p orbital, okay, overlaps. When an s orbital overlaps, when it overlaps with any other orbital, let's say for example like the p orbital, okay, let's say s orbital plus p orbital, the overlapping are going to have what. Okay, they are now going to have what your and so when they overlap like this, a strong bond is formed. A strong bond called the sigma bond. Sigma bond is what is formed, represented like this. Okay, so when an s orbital overlaps with a what with any other orbital, okay, like what well, like the p orbital as we are seeing here, okay, it leads to the formation of a very strong bond called the sigma bond. Take note of that now. Sigma, form, uh, sigma bond can also be formed when two p orbitals overlap head on. Okay, when two orb when two p orbitals overlap head on, sigma bond can also be formed. Let me show you an example. Okay, so this is the side. This is what this is the head. So when two p orbitals okay overlap. Okay, let's say we have this p orbital plus what overlapping with this p orbital to now give us like this. Okay. Overlapping like this, okay. The bond that is formed, if they are overlapping head on, take note, okay. If they are overlapping what head on, this is the head, okay. They are overlapping head on, it leads to the formation of a sigma bond, sigma bond, all right. So when two p orbital overlap head on, head on, take note, all right, it leads to the formation of a sigma bond, okay. But when two p orbital overlap, Laterally, when they overlap laterally, okay, that is what sideways, okay. Let's say like this. Now what? Uh, a p orbital like this, then plus another one like this, overlapping. This is like eight, Abi. Then you now have something like this, all right. Okay. So this is what lateral what overlapping. When you say they overlapping, what laterally, laterally or what sideways. Okay, so this one is what sideways or overlapping. When they overlap sideways, it leads to the formation of what of a pi bond. Pi bond. Okay, pi bond is formed. That is what pi 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 bond is formed when two p orbitals overlap overlap what laterally or what or sideways. But if they overlap what head on, a sigma bond is formed. You must know this 
and use it to work to no peace. Okay, so in the last episode, we hinted about pi bond and sigma bond. All right, now the carbon to carbon bonds, the carbon to carbon double bond that is found in alkenes, carbon to carbon double bond that is found in what in alkenes. Okay, it has what I told you in the, in the last slide, it has what one pi bond and what one sigma what bond. Okay, take note of that. Now, during reactions, this pi bond is broken down. Okay, but the sigma bond is unaffected because, like I told you in the last slide, as well, that the sigma bond is what is way stronger than the pi bond, it's stronger than the pi bond. Okay, so during reaction, the sigma bond is what uh is unaffected, but the pi bond is what is broken down. Okay, so now. Also, the carbon to carbon triple bond, okay, found in what? In alkynes. Alkynes. We're still going to talk, talk about alkynes, alkynes, and I can know, both of you can know, wait. Ah, this organic chemistry now about, this is, see, this is perfect organic chemistry. So, if, and this is even your syllabus, so don't joke with it. Okay, so now the carbon to carbon triple bond that is found in alkynes, all right, has what? Two pi bonds, pi bonds, and what? One was sigma bond. Okay, now during reactions, these pi bonds are what they are broken down. Okay, but this sigma bond is not what affected. Okay, and that was uh, sequenced with the fact that I said that the sigma bond are stronger than the pi bond. Okay, but of course, definitely I was comparing them with the alkenes in the, what, the last episode, and I told you that this triple bond found in alkenes. Okay, is stronger than what is stronger than the single bond found in alkene. Okay, and I compared it to with a with a what with a with holding three barrels or three pencils. It is easier for you to break one barrel than for you to what to break what three what barrels. Abi, it's easier. All right, so that's why this triple bond in alkenes is stronger than what this single bond in what in alkene. Okay, but this sigma bond that is found okay in what in alkenes is stronger than what than this what uh. Uh, pi bonds. It's, it's, it's stronger than the pi bonds that are what found in what in the what in the alkynes. All right. So please take note of what of that. Okay. Sigma bond is stronger than pi bonds. Okay. So this is where we are going to what uh, close the shop for this class. In the next episode, we are going to what talk about another interesting what part as we continue our study into organic chemistry. Now let us quickly see a question from the application, and we are done. 2021 number 15, which says amine orbitals are in the D sub shell A1. B3, C5, D7. Okay, obviously, we say what the D orbital has what five suborbitals. So that would be what option C5. <clears throat> Let's see 2004 number 33. The shape of the S orbital is A, elliptical, B, spiral, C, circular, D, spherical. The shape of, of the S orbital is what is spherical. All right. So uh, these are many more questions on this app. Go and download the app and start practicing your way to success. My name is Master T, your grand commander. All right. And I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.